This is a question from chapter 10 on elections, and I think it's a really great question. We've hinted at this idea of the differences between independents and strong partisans. But the question was asked, do the votes from independents at this point in time matter more than strong Democrats, strong Republicans, when it comes down to the final election, since they, and I'm assuming it's independents, are not 100% committed. Now, I think in terms of studying voters and voter behavior, this is a really important question. And we have a lot of information about independents, about strong partisans, to answer a couple of key questions that are kind of embedded in this particular question. And so what I'm going to do is present this information in the series of questions and then ask you at the end what your thoughts are. What do you think this data shows us about American politics? And so the first question that I really want to ask is what percentage of the electorate are independents, meaning pure independents, versus those who are strong partisans? Now, if we take the 2016 American National Election Studies, which is done every election year, and we break down the respondents <clears throat> by partisan identification within the electorate, what we see in kind of a pie chart form are strong Democrats, about 21% of the electorate, going to not very strong Democrats, almost 14%, and then independent Democrats, about 11%. So if you add up the percentage of those folks who identify as Democrats, 21, 14, let's see, that's 35, add in another 10 to 11, you're talking about 45 to 46% of the electorate identifying as Democrats. In the middle, the independents, almost 15%. Then you start looking at Republican identification. So for independent-leaning Republicans, 11%. Not very strong Republicans, about 12%. And then strong Republicans, 16%. So this is kind of how political scientists who study American politics look at the overall electorate. How many strong Democrats, how many strong Republicans showed up, and then break it down all the way around this pie chart. So hopefully this gives you a sense of <clears throat> what the typical electorate will look like. Now remember, this is national electorate numbers. Every state could be different and typically are different. So with that first question asked, the second question that I would ask are, is, what are the voting preferences of partisan identifiers? And this is kind of a review from what we've done uh, previously. And I'm just going to quickly run through how each of these classifications from strong Democrat all the way down to independents, and then all the way down to strong Republicans. How do these folks tend to cast their presidential votes? And as we've seen in a previous class, strong Democrats, 97% of the time, vote Democratic. You move to not very strong Democrats, weak Democrats, still three quarters of them are voting for Hillary Clinton. But notice, 17% voted for Donald Trump. Independent-leaning Democrats, slightly higher partisan Democratic voters. Independents, here's the really interesting and different uh, aspect that we saw in 2016. Nearly 22% voted for a third party. 44% <clears throat> voted for Donald Trump. A third of them voted for Hillary Clinton. Move into independent Republicans. Not very strong Republicans. Again, a kind of mirror image here. 76% not very strong Democrats voted Democratic. 
75% not very strong Republicans voted for Donald Trump. But 80% of independent leaners voted for their party that they lean to. And then strong Republicans, again, like strong Democrats, 95%. So our next question, what percentage of partisan identifiers express a likelihood of voting in November? And here, what we see again broken down by partisan identification. The question was asked on the American National Election Studies, how likely is it that you will vote in November? And what I did was I took the answers for extremely likely, very likely, or not likely at all. And there are two kind of in the middle uh, responses that I just didn't include <clears throat> because I think what you need to see are the extremely likely, very likely folks versus not likely at all. And again, break it down by partisan identification. So starting with strong Democrats, 83% of them said that they were extremely likely. Only less than 4% of strong Democrats say that they were not likely at all to vote. That's a pretty low percentage. You start to move in, notice how it goes from 83 down to almost 60% that were extremely likely to show up to vote. But here, 3.4 to 9.8. That's a pretty good jump up of folks not likely to show up at all. Independent Democrats, about the same as a weak Democrat, 59 to 57, 9.8, almost 10 to almost 12. Look at independents. Only 38% of them said that they were extremely likely to show up to vote. Nearly 30% of them said, meh, it's not likely I'm going to show up to vote in November. Moving into Republican identifiers, again, bounces up 65%, tending to say they were extremely likely to show up to vote. Only 10% said that they were not likely at all. The not very strong Republicans, again, a kind of interesting drop, but the same kind of percentage as independent leaners. And not surprisingly, among strong Republicans, 80%, just like over here with strong Democrats, 83% said it was very likely they were going to show up to vote. So the next question that I would ask is, what percentage of partisan identifiers are interested in the campaign? Here, this question previously was talking about the likelihood of voting in November. This question tends to get at, are you interested in the campaign? And again, breaking it down by partisan identification, strong Democrats, 63% said, yeah, I'm very interested, very much interested in this campaign. Moving along the lines, notice what happens here which is interesting, only a third of not very strong Democrats said that they had interest in the campaign, but nearly half of independent Democrats said they had an interest in the campaign. Among independents, the plurality, 42%, eh, somewhat interested in the campaign. But look at this, nearly 30%, almost the exact same percentage as those that said they were very much interested versus those not much interest at all. Moving into Republican identifiers, independent Republicans, not very strong Republicans, and then strong Republicans. So you'll notice among the strong partisans, almost the exact same percentage expressed very much of an interest, very low, not much interest. But interesting among not strong uh, Republicans, it's almost evenly divided, whereas among not strong Democrats, both an advantage to somewhat interested versus very much interested. The final question that I would ask, <clears throat> when do voters decide in the campaign that they're going to vote for? And we do have some limited information to try and answer this question. The first is from our exit polls in 2016. And here the question was asked, 
when did you decide your presidential vote? Now, we don't unfortunately have it broken down by party identification. That would be a great way to look at this. But in general, for most all of the voters who are deciding to vote in 2016, a significant majority, 60% 60, 60 decided before September. For those folks who decided in September, two months out, 12%. For those folks who decided the month before the election, another 12%. So really, before you move into November, you've got 24 plus 60, 84%. So let's just say 85% of the electorate has decided who they are going to vote for before the month of November. It's during the last week of the election and the last few days that you see the remainder of the voters making up their minds. So very small percentages. Now I came across a study done in terms of comparing the United States to other countries and the other countries, Canada, Britain, Netherlands, and New Zealand. The question was asked, how many voters change their minds in the month preceding an election? And what this particular political scientist found and he looked at was the predicted probability of changing one's mind in each country at different points. So you got 30 days before the election, down to 20, down to 10, and down to the final day before election day. And notice the pattern among these countries as the days decrease towards election day. Do you see a pattern? So here, Canada, 19, almost 20% of the electorate 30 days out could have changed their mind. In New Zealand, it was 30%, so nearly a third. Notice the United States, 8%, 8%, down to 4% the day before. So what this tells me is that for most American voters, they've got their mind made up, and they're not going to change their particular perspective. So here's kind of the takeaways that I would have for this great question, do the votes from independents matter more than strong partisans when it comes down to the final election? I think it's critical in terms of a strategy and consideration of the data just presented for the candidates, the campaigns, and the parties to really be thinking about two critical questions. And I raised this question earlier about political parties, but I think this is a good point to reinforce. First question, do you focus on persuading pure independence? Those folks that may or may not show up, that may split their vote one way or the other. Or if you're a candidate, if you're a campaign, if you're Joe Biden or Donald Trump or whoever, do you focus on mobilizing and energizing partisans and particularly leaners who identify with your particular party. And so I think this is a crucial question to really think about in terms of how elections kind of play out as we move towards November. And the final question that I would leave you with is, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages to focusing on persuasion of pure independence versus mobilizing and energizing partisan leaners in elections.